Hey guys, Sensei Jason here from showandru.ca. I want to talk to you today about how to get to the next level with your kata. But I'm not talking about physical technique, I'm talking about mentally, okay? Let's just assume you've learned your techniques, your physical techniques, you've got the pattern down, you know exactly where your key eyes are and all that stuff. So physically, the kata is coming along. But there's a whole other side to kata and it's the mental side of kata. What can you do mentally to improve the performance of your kata? We're going to talk about it in today's video, so stick around and check it out. Okay, so we want to talk about mental performance, all right? Firstly, let's just establish a baseline, okay? Let's just say for the sake of this video that performing any one technique has four main components to it. And of course, each one of those components, you know, you can break down and, and dive into uh, and talk about, you know, forever. But let's just, to keep it simple and quick for this video, there's four main parts to any technique, okay? The first part is, uh, you know, your, your wind up. You're winding up to do something, block, kick, step, whatever it is. There's something that leads you up to doing that technique. That is number one. Number two is when you reach the point where you you end you're at the end of the windup and you're about to contract to perform that technique. That's step number two. We'll call it contraction. Okay. Then you perform you you, you perform said te technique and then what do we all need to do? Uh, we need to kime at the end of that technique or tighten up and kime at the focal point of that technique and then of course after that you relax. Right. So step number one is we'll call it the uh, wind up. Okay. Step number two is the contraction. Right. Step number three is the key mate. Right. And then step number four is relax. Okay. You're like, well, what the hell does that have to do with the mental side of kata? Well, here we go. If we get each, it's very common kata. A lot of people know but it's 20 techniques, I want to say. 20, 20 techniques to perform that full kata. When you're doing your kata, it's very important that you break down the kata into its 20 individual techniques. Okay, this is like technique number one, technique number two, technique number three, technique number four, bop, 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 bop. Each technique has its own little box, okay? And what's happening in each one of these boxes? Well, what's happening is these four elements of performing your technique happens in each one of your techniques. So if we each has 20 or so techniques, you're performing this 20 times. And from a mental perspective, you have to reset yourself right here, right here, right here, right here. You must reset back to zero before you execute your next technique and then go back to uh, step number one, or sorry, well, step number four, relax. Execute, relax, execute, relax. If you can think about your kata that way and break your kata down into the components, uh, into these individual components, each technique in its way, in its own way, is almost like its own kata. And why is that important? Well, a lot of times when you see people performing kata, it kind of looks a little bit like a run-on sentence, almost like these lines don't exist. Right? They're just they're going through the techniques, almost kind of in a flat line. And the kata has no life and it has no dynamic, okay? And they don't understand the concept. This concept or these sequence of events is happening on every technique. You have to reset and then re-execute. Reset, re-execute, execute, 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 okay? So what that looks like, all right, and it does look like something, uh, even though it's sort of a, a mental uh, a state of mind, is... You know, if I if I do a run-on sentence, that kind of becomes very uh, without any sort of dynamic. It doesn't have any color, so it looks you know fugitish. Looks like very run-on, almost like a run-on sentence, right? No grammar, no punctuation. Okay, I'm not giving myself time to reset and set myself up for the next technique, right? So if I do that, if I reset and I give my myself the mental space to prepare for each technique that kind of takes on a bit of a different form. So even though I'm doing something different mentally, there is a physical representation of that happening 
in my kata, and it looks a little bit like this. so on and so on and so on. So what I'm doing there is I'm, I know I've done this kata a million times. A lot of you guys have done your katas millions of times as well. You know the pattern. Stop worrying about the pattern, okay? Focus on breaking the pattern down into its individual techniques and executing this sequence of events and actually emphasizing, relax, I've got like all these different colors of markers going on here, it's pretty cool. But you want to emphasize relax, particularly, because this is what you need to do before you reset and go back to step number one. This is very important. Execute this sequence, relax physically, relax mentally, and then move to the next technique, okay? So, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to uh, hear your questions and comments. Please uh, just write them in the bottom of the YouTube video. And if uh, you're able, check out the website, shonru.ca. We've got some great videos up there. You can check out the, uh, some of our katas, uh, read up on some of the instructors, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're in the Oshawa area, please come by the dojo and say hello. Uh, we're open six days a week, and uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. So until next time, Jason Pennell, shonru.ca, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.